Think of a skill that you tried to learn recently and what was one of the first things that you did to try to learn that skill? My guess is if you're anything like me, you went to YouTube to look for a tutorial for said skill. We can find thousands of tutorials on YouTube for pretty much whatever topic we would uh, want to learn. But because YouTube has thousands of tutorials and the main goal of YouTube is to keep you on the platform for as long as possible, it's very easy to get stuck in a place called tutorial hell. I've been there, I'm sure you've been there, it's the place where we're watching endless playlists of tutorials to try to learn a skill. But there's a big problem with tutorial hell, and it's really that we're not actually learning anything when we're watching all of those tutorials. Because when we're watching all of those tutorials about how to learn a skill, we are forgetting more than 80% of what we absorb through those tutorials. So in effect, we're really kind of just wasting our time. But it feels like we're making progress when we're watching tutorials. It's very deceptive. And the reason why it feels like that is because we have been conditioned that way based off of our experience in school. So if your experience in school was anything like mine, the way that we would go about learning is we would sit in a classroom and listen to a teacher talk at us for hours on end for five days a week. And so because we are in school for a large part of our life, we are led to believe that by passively sitting and listening to an instructor or a teacher, that is how we learn information and skills. And I think that's why it's carried through to why a lot of people, including myself, find it so much easier to watch tutorials and feel like we're learning something because it replicates the learning style that we're accustomed to in our upbringing through school. But the the thing that is missing from watching tutorials, and that is arguably, or no, it is the key component to learning a skill, is taking action. That's the thing that's missing from watching tutorials. So if you think about when you learned to ride a bike, if you learned to ride a bike, how did you learn to do that? My, my guess is that you probably were not reading books and you were probably not watching tutorials on riding a bike. My guess, or at least for me, I got on the bike, I fell down, I got up, I tried again, tried to tweak what I was doing, I fell again, and I just sort of repeated that process until I got better at riding a bike. I just repeatedly took action, I repeatedly failed, I tried to tweak what I was doing until I finally found success with it. And that's really what the essence of uh, skill acquisition is and how you go about achieving that. When we take action, there's this inherent risk of failure. And this is another thing that the school system has bred us to try to avoid at all costs because it's based off uh, a grading system. So you either pass or you fail. And if you pass, you're able to move forward a grade. And if you fail, you have to move or you have to stay at whatever grade level and be held back. And so we get this fear of failure because we don't want the embarrassment of being held back, especially if our friends move forward, and we don't want the embarrassment of not being able to get into the college that we want to get into. But the irony is that we are graded not on our ability to learn skills, but on our ability to regurgitate information. But unfortunately, that fear of failure carries on even after schooling. So now long after school, we have this fear of failure. And so now we equate to failing to being bad at something or we did something bad. And I think this is the core reason why we tend to overconsume tutorials on YouTube because YouTube has led to this free resource where we can watch a ton of different tutorials and we can feel like we're learning anything and there's no risk of failing because we're not actually taking action on something. And if we're not taking action, then there's no risk of failing. And if there's no risk of failing, then we don't feel bad for ourselves. So really the key to learning more effectively is we need to reprogram our minds to see failure as a good thing. Because as a kid, that is how we got better at things. Like I talked about with the riding a bike example. We got better at riding a bike by continuously getting on, falling, tweaking what we did, 
we probably fell again and we just kept going through that cycle until we figured out how to do it. And the neat thing about that is that once we finally gain the success from all those repeated failures and, and tweaking, it becomes so much more satisfying and, and gratifying when we do finally learn that skill that we've been trying to develop. So we need to take that same strategy, that riding a bike strategy on how we learned how to do that as kids, and we need to take that forward with how we learn any skill that we want to cultivate. And so for me personally, this is the approach that I'm taking when it comes to learning web design and development. This is something that I've been working on for the past several months. And so for me, I came up with this four step cyclical process that has really helped me to learn material a lot faster than my old method of watching a lot of tutorials and taking only a little bit of action. Step number one is to engage in a project to learn your skill. So if you're learning web design, start creating websites. If you're learning how to write, do copywriting, start writing articles, start creating things with whatever skill that you're trying to learn. Inevitably, you're going to come across obstacles and that takes us to step number two. Step number two is to try to overcome the obstacle on your own first. It is very tempting when you come across an obstacle to want to immediately jump to a tutorial or a forum to try to solve the answer for you. But I really urge you, I have done the most learning when I try to solve a problem on my own because it flexes your ability to, to critically think. And if there's one thing that tutorials cannot teach you, no matter how hard you try, they cannot teach you how to critically think. The Literally, the only way to do that is to solve problems that you are not familiar with and to see if you can creatively figure out how to solve those problems. And so my rule with this step is to, I try to exhaust all solutions that I can think of to solve a problem. So if I'm doing web design and I can't get something to be responsive on a mobile device, I'm gonna try every solution that I can think of and I may only have one or two solutions that I'm thinking of, but I'm going to try them and then if after I exhausted all my options, then I move on to step number three. Number three is to seek help for the obstacle that you can't overcome. So once you've exhausted all the options on trying to solve the problem on your own, now you can try to look for a tutorial for that problem. If it's a really specific obstacle, then you can look through forums, use Reddit, use Quora, or you can even submit your own forum, po uh, forum post. I know that's something that I've done quite a bit with learning um, web design. And so once you do that, and once you find the answer for the obstacle that you have, it's very tempting, I know for me, to want to go to other tutorials as well, to see other people's viewpoint on it, to look at other similar solutions that people come up with. I would really urge to not do that. And then, and once you find a solution, even if it's not, even if you don't totally understand it, if you can at least apply it, I encourage you to just get out and start doing that and start taking action again. And so that takes us to step number four. So step number four is to apply that learned concept to the obstacle that you were facing. So ideally, you don't get stuck in tutorial hell again, you found whatever resource that you needed in order to overcome the obstacle, and you try to implement that. And once you do, and you find success with that, then you just move back to step number one again, and you start engaging in that project to continue to refine your skill. And so it just works in a cycle like this. And, and really the key part of this is that step two, which is to try to overcome any obstacle on your own. That for me has by far been the largest way that I've been to learn skills so much faster is just by flexing that critical thinking muscle. Now, there is a caveat to this process that I outlined. I think that if you are a complete beginner at whatever skill it is that you're trying to learn, you know, web design, coding, music, writing, drop shipping, it doesn't matter. Whatever skill that you're trying to learn, I think if you're just starting out, it makes a lot of sense to go through a tutorial in the beginning so that you don't start off with any poor habits. The, cav the, the, the secondary caveat is that this should be a tutorial that is sort of like a comprehensive beginner's guide, like a crash course, that's oftentimes what they're labeled as on YouTube. It should be something where you're following along with the instructor to 
learn whatever skill it is that you're trying to learn. Or maybe it's you actually do a course, whether that's a free course or a paid course. I know for me, I often opt to do paid courses just because it all the information I need is in it, and it's usually something where I can work alongside the instructor to learn the skill. So I think if you're a complete beginner, it makes sense to watch a tutorial to just figure out what it is that you're doing because likely if you're just starting something, like if you just started web design for the first time, uh, my guess is you're not, you're not gonna be able to build a website from scratch. You're gonna need some sort of beginner's guide or crash course to figure out what the hell you're doing. Once you have a basic grasp of the skill and you kind of know the fundamentals from watching whatever crash course that you watched, then I would engage in the process that I outlined above. And so I think if you follow this process, you are going to vastly improve the rate at which you learn skills. And more importantly, you are going to have an improved ability to critically think. And having an ability to critically think is arguably the most important skill for anything that you wanna learn because it's transferable to any aspect, all aspects of life. You are going to encounter obstacles, not just with skills that you're trying to learn, but with relationships that you have professionally, uh, personally, and having the ability to critically think about that is just an important skill to have. And so highly encourage you to adopt this process when it comes to uh, learning skills. And if you found this video to be helpful, it would mean a lot if you hit the subscribe button. It helps me out more than you know, and just lets me know if these videos are resonating with you. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.